All right, in the back room, I ran across something that I wanted to ask about. You guys know we're fascinated with military history. Well, let's go back and, and take a look at this. Sam, tell us a little bit about this. So this actually came from a local gentleman, and he was actually Marty's uh, teacher, Marty, the owner of the funeral home and the museum here. Mm -hmm. He was his teacher in fifth and sixth grade. His name is Mr. Galen Waite, and he was an avid military collector. Mm -hmm. And when he had died, he wanted this to go to Marty for the museum. Uh, and it's a wonderful fit for the museum because this is actually a burial flag from one of Hitler's bodyguards. And you can see there's a piece of his shirt that's included. Uh, and then the SS logos, SS pins, World War I uh, medal, and then a couple of World War II emblems as well. Do we know the name of the bodyguard or just... No. I, I don't know if Mr. Waite knew it or not when all we knew is when he passed, he wanted it here. And that was all the information that his family could give us on it. That's pretty incredible. It's, it's one of my favorite pieces because of the rarity. And so where would this flag have been? Would it have been on his coffin? or Yes. Yep. yep. Okay. They would have placed the flag then on his casket with him. Uh, and I imagine, you know, once they were going to go and proceed to a cemetery for burial, whoever was around decided they were going to go ahead and maybe just take that. Huh. Another great thing we found at this museum are the different salesman samples. And salesman samples are great if you want to collect something because it's small and doesn't take up a lot of room in your house. Some of the most cool things I found here, these are the burial vault salesman samples. You can actually see how they go in and you can put the lids right on. This one here though is more of that, that copper the little lid that goes over. What year is this Sam? That's a good question. Uh, I do not know on, on these salesman samples on a lot of them I don't necessarily know the it the depicts about the year of the time frame, the 1800s. I would say that would probably be in the early part of the 20th century, early. earlier parts anyhow. And you always can get an idea of what they're trying to sell you. You never see that very often, no. where you can actually put two things together of what they're yeah. trying to sell you when that door-to-door -door salesman comes. And this would have been the vault. The vault on the outside. And then how the, the casket fits on the inside. Sam has probably the coolest one. They're locked up over there by him. Looks like the casket. Yeah, this is a neat little salesman sample. So it goes with this casket. Uh, same color of the interior would have been on the uh, size correct model. And you can see, you know, you can have it open during a viewing and before you would put somebody in the ground, then you could put this added layer on there of metal over the casket and then the wooden lid would go over that for added layer of protection once and, they're buried. And these are just exact scaled down models of the real thing they were selling, correct? Yeah. Yep. That's very interesting. And then back behind you here, we have the salesman samples of more of the burial vaults. Okay. Once again, Sam got the coolest one neighbor by him. <laughs> <laughs> Those are elaborate. I didn't know that the vaults were that elaborate back then. And, and some of them today can still get to be uh, fairly elaborate. They would. <laughs> I mean, I, I like that too. I mean, that deserves to be out there. That is cool. Yeah, another yeah. glass face. Now, that's not a is that a sample or is that for a child? That one would be for a child, yeah. That's a real one. Okay. And of course, that one's a little more rough than the other examples we have. Uh huh. Not used, but. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. yeah. And then these are your morning clothes here. Yeah. I didn't know if that would qualify as lightly used. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just kind of shows the difference in um, society. I mean, even somebody who was very poor in a, in a prairie style dress wore all black. Yeah. in mourning compared to somebody yeah. who was a little bit more higher society. And, and that's the, the interesting thing about both of these. They came from the same funeral home that our smaller casket in the shipping container came from. And these would both be um, 
essentially loners. Uh, bleach stains not included and whatnot. But they would have been for people, you know, if they did not have the means, especially then they could they could still have a, a, a dress to wear to a service then. This is not what they would actually like put their mother or grandmother in no. to be buried in. No. Then. No, nope. so these are morning clothes. Okay. Yep. All right. These are morning clothes. If, and the tradition was is that you wore all black. Um, you had to be dressed all the way down to your ankles in black. Um, like he said, they came from the same funeral home. So it's kind of interesting that one is much more fancy as yeah. opposed to another one. But maybe the people that came in, one was a poor family and one was... Yeah. A less poor family, and they wanted them to be dressed according to maybe who was coming in. Yeah, yeah. What the clientele might have been. Because this one over here is quite a bit more... Yeah. More fancy. I mean, it, it's a lot more fancy. I mean, that's a prairie dress, and this is a, a day dress. God, people were so much shorter then. Yeah. Yeah. This reminds me of the one from the uh, Confederate funeral that we recorded uh, in a past video. Yeah. That the reenactors were wearing. So beautiful, though, just the thought of, of what you had to go through even in, in time then and how those traditions, like with the pictures, we still see it now and, and what you wear at a funeral and, and just the difference in what you might have, have worn and the, the stigma of society and death and some yeah. of it is, is still there today. You know, it, it's so interesting, you know, at that point in time, you would have made every effort possible to make yourself look acceptable from a societal norm or cultural norm. And, you know, sometimes today, a lot of families even request that the staff will wear um, jeans, you know, or we had a, a gentleman, we did a service for a family member of his and he mandated that all the staff took our ties off. Uh, uh, so there's certainly a, a huge shift in the way things are done in that regard. The Egyptian jars are cool too. Man, it's all cool. It's all history. And of course, you know, so Marty went on a trip to Egypt. Oh, that, that would have had to be 2015. And he had always wanted to go, especially being a funeral director. He kind of wanted to see some of the earlier history of it. And he then, you know, purchased these, and those are not old by any means, they're all modern. But he wanted to put them in here, and in shipping, every single one of them broke. Oh, no. <laughs> every one of them. So we glued together which, you know, the parts we could, and but that's why they are broken. They it, did not handle the shipping. Is this a hair wreath? That I'm seeing, or is that something else? Let me see down there here. Mm. No, that is not. And I really don't know the story on the shock of wheat with a ribbon on it. Okay. I was just wondering if it was made of hair. No, 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 not that one. I have something to do with just the, the farming. Yeah. In general. And of course, we are in Iowa, I guess. And this just shows you how important that family was to them and that may be the only picture they had of of that gentleman and that's why it's framed so ornately because that would be a lot of times the only picture that they had of that ancestor. If you go right above it, that's the GAR medal. Hmm. Next to that name plate. So it would have been a Civil War soldier. That's a Civil War soldier. Below you here by the footrest is another family picture with the deceased. So those ornate frames is because it's the only picture that they would have of their loved one. It's not anything that is, is being disrespectful of somebody who died. It's the only picture that they would have of their loved one because photography wasn't like now where we can snap every shot that we have and like i would mentioned earlier you know some folks will still snap a picture but something that we see pretty frequently as opposed to snapping a photo is um, if somebody is going to have a service here but then be buried in mexico 
there will be family that can't make it up from Mexico to see this service, so you know they'll get on FaceTime, and they'll show the whole service. You know, and before the service starts, they'll go up and get a video of the casket and the deceased in the casket, so that person can then see them. Uh, wow. I've seen a couple of funerals um, during COVID-19, the entire funerals. We have. Now, too. I had a friend that passed away recently, and her funeral was all on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, even the church even the church service was yeah. because of the restrictions of being yeah. able to be in person. Even, even now, when we are able to be in person, you know, we're, we're still uh, live streaming it then um, because there's a lot of older folks who still aren't comfortable. You know, they still don't want to go. So we're seeing, you know, we may not have the, the photographs, you know, like that. We don't have to go and have them developed, but uh, there's still remnants of that. You know, that we're seeing. Yeah. 